you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, we will create an access point group and modify some of its settings. Then we'll compare the configurations of the default access point group to the newly created access point group and migrate an access point over to it. Let's get started. So we're here in Smart Zone, we're logged in. Uh, as you can see, we've already got some domains and zones applied. And subsequently, we also have some access points um, defined as well. So when you create a zone, um, the settings that you specify in that zone actually propagate over to a default access point group. These access point group settings contain things like the location of the access points, uh, what radios the access points use, tunnels that the access points use, um, as well as model specific configurations that maybe apply to a specific type of access point. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an additional access point group under this zone because uh, we, we want to treat our, our Ruckus R510 a little bit differently than the other APs in this group. To get started, we're going to go ahead and select the demo zone, which, which we want this AP group to fall under. So we've got demo zone one highlighted here. We're going to go ahead and click the plus button, uh, which is going to bring up the create group dialog. So the first step we're going to do, we're just going to name uh, our AP group. I'm going to call it AP group two. Um, so what you can see here is we've got a lot of settings with override zone toggles. So any of the settings that we want to change, again, when you create a zone, the configurations are applied at that time. So the access points default group um, inherits all those configurations. So essentially what we're doing is we are overriding the zone configuration for this particular access point group. So any settings that we want to be unique, uh, we just need to override. So you can see there are some location settings. There are radio settings. So let's, let's, um, let's go ahead and pick like auto cell sizing. So let's say that we want to allow our radios for both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz to automatically size themselves based on other APs they hear in the environment. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on. So it's already enabled. Um, we're overriding it. So we now will have these settings applied to these APs. Um, you can see that there's tunnel options that can be overridden. Uh, also, uh, there's some model specific stuff. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to take our R510 and apply some differences um, in this AP group for R510 models. The first thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to override um, the USB port and enable it. So we may have an IoT device that we want to plug in a module for on this particular um, device. So we're going to go ahead and enable that here. Uh, we can also do things like disable the LEDs. So Maybe this is in a location where the lights flashing may bother someone. We can turn that off here, um, no problem. So any AP, any 510 APs in this group will have the, these applied to them. Um, the R510 also has two, two ports, so we can actually override the settings for these ports. So we can see um, by default the, they are uh, trunk WAN ports. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just choose to turn the secondary port off for these. So in this particular environment, um, we're not we're not running two connections to this, um, and we're just going to turn it off for security reasons. So uh, we'll set that to off. So once you've made all the changes that you want to make to your AP group, um, you can choose OK. Now that we've saved it, we can see under demo zone one that we've got two access point groups. We have the group that we created and the default group. Uh, if we select the AP group two, we can kind of look at the configuration of it without having to go in and edit it by selecting it and uh, clicking on the configuration tab. So clicking on the configuration tab, we can get an overview of kind of the settings here and we can see what's been inherited from the the zone and what's been overridden so we can see that we are overriding here the auto cell sizing uh, which overrides the power adjustment um, we can also see uh, what our configurations are on a model specific basis we're going to go down and select the r510 we can see that it says edited there and you can see that we are overriding 
the USB, the LEDs, and the port settings. So we can see all of those things um, from just the configuration tab. So currently, um, also we can see since we've selected it, we don't have anything showing up here in the right. That means there's no APs that are in this group currently accepting any of these configurations. So our next step is gonna be to move an AP over. So let's go back over. We know that we've got two in the default zone. Let's select the default zone. Um, and we wanna move the R510. So we're gonna select the R510. We're gonna choose to move the R510. And then we're just gonna select the group. So it was under demo domain one, demo zone one, AP group two. So we're gonna choose okay. We're gonna get a confirmation. And now you can see the default group is uh, only consisting of the R310. We switch over to AP group two. We now see the R510 there. So if we select the R510, we can also look at its specific configuration without having to go into the configuration. So we've selected it. We'll click on the configuration tab and we can see things that um, apply to this particular AP. So we can see um, we can see that we've got still the R510 model stuff that we've overridden. We've got the USB port on. We've disabled the LEDs. Uh, you can also see that we've got LAN 2 off. I know it's grayed out. It may be a little hard to see, but we turned LAN 2 off as, as, as a part of this AP group as well. So that port will be disabled. Anybody plugging into that won't be able to get any kind of connectivity. So this was just a very basic overview of how to create an access point group, how to override the defaults from the zone in that access point group. We didn't go over all of the settings that we could have overridden. Um, in a future video, we're going to talk about wireless LAN groups and how to utilize them along with access point groups to kind of control which WLANs are being propagated from a access point group. So we hope you join us for future videos in this series. Thanks for taking the time to view this demonstration.